is hard to imagine anyone with even a passing knowledge of armored warfare that is not able to recognize and differentiate between a tiger and a king tiger. They are very different looking tanks that instantly earn an infamous and fantastical reputation. In this video, we will be taking a look at an obscure proposed stop gap between the legendary beast designated VK 4502H or Tiger 2, which is not to be confused with the King Tiger. The Tiger 1, or more correctly Panzerkampfwagen Tiger Ausführung A, had a very boxy looking hull with a vertical driver's plate, vertical sides, and a circular turret. The Tiger 2, or Panzerkampfwagen Tiger aus B, better known as the King Tiger or Royal Tiger, has a very obviously sloping glazes and sloping sides with an almost semi oval shaped turret. How the Tiger 2 follows the Tiger 1 in design is clearly more complex than simply an improvement over the Tiger 1, as it appears to incorporate substantial improvements in all areas. This apparent leap in design can seem confusing, because there is a step in between these two vehicles which has not previously been well recorded or understood. This missing step in Tiger Evolution is the VK4502H, and understanding the VK4502H allows for an understanding of the Tiger 1, the Tiger 2, and the Tiger 3, the original name for what we know as the Tiger 2. Welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today, I'll be covering the VK4502H Tiger 2 Blueprint Tank. If you like what we do, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. If you want to contribute more directly, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. Any help would be really appreciated. The clue to the missing step in the evolutionary line of the Tiger 1 to Tiger 2 lies in understanding the Volkettenkraftfahrzeug, or fully tracked experimental vehicle or VK numbers. The Tiger 1 was developed as the VK4501H, meaning VK fully tracked experimental vehicle 45, 45 tons, 01, first design. H, manufacturer's initial in brackets, in this case, the firm of Henschel Unson. The Tiger II, on the other hand, was a VK4503H, making it the third design. This missing step is therefore obvious when understood in these terms. VK4502H, the second design for a 55 tons vehicle from Henschel. So what was this mysterious vehicle and what did it look like? The blueprint for the hull is not dated, but the date for the design can still be figured out. The first confirmed mention of the VK4502H was at a meeting held 15th and 16th of April 1942 by the Waffenprüfung 6 or Waffenprüfungsamt, a weapon testing office responsible for tank design. At this meeting, representatives from Porsche and Henschel sat down with Waffenprüfung 6 officials to discuss improvements to the 45-ton heavy tank. Here, on 16th April, VK4502H was formally designated by Waffenprüfen 6. This new vehicle was the VK4502H, described by Jens and Doyle as a makeshift design, which did not survive very long even on the drawing boards. The VK4502H in fact survived just a few months. Originating in April 1942, by October 1942, production plans were being reviewed with a view to getting the VK4503 into production. The Panzerkommission, the body responsible for overall development, was unhappy that the Tiger 1, something which was really just a stopgap en route to the VK4503H, was going to have to be produced by the hundreds, at least 424, before the Tiger 3, VK4503, could get into production. Henschel, as an interim suggestion, proposed that they simply make 330 Tiger 1, then switch to 170 Tiger IIs, VK4502, for a total of 500 heavy tanks. That plan would allow the Tiger III to enter production as Tank 501 in the program, with production starting in July 1943. Oberst Tomale from the Panzer Commission, however, rejected this proposal by Henschel. There would be no VK4502H production. Instead, the VK4501H or Tiger 1 would stay in production until the Tiger 3 VK4503 came online, with an expectation of the date being September 1943. As a result of this decision, the Tiger 2 VK4502 
a tank which had been officially designated in April was dead by October that year. A new attempt at a replacement 45-ton heavy tank designated PK-4503 was postulated. That vehicle was originally to reuse components from PK-4501H, but it too was subject to change and was totally redesigned in February 1943 to incorporate components from the MAN design Panther tank. Perhaps somewhat confusingly, although the PK-4502H was abandoned in October 1942, it had been designated by Waffenproven Sex as a Tiger II on 18 September 1942, with the PK-4503H being named Tiger III. Thus, the first Tiger II lasted only one month and the Tiger III was named back to Tiger II on 3rd of March 1943. No more mention of the PK-4502H was made after November 1942. In order to understand the design, there is only some circumstantial evidence gained from understanding the dates of development steps in the designing of the Tiger 1 and 2 and overlaying them. Combining this with a single surviving blueprint which covers just the hull means a picture of the VK4502H emerges a little more clearly. The original blueprint for this vehicle sadly cannot be published, as it is privately owned and no permission to reproduce it can be obtained at this time. The outline for the hull has, however, been reproduced below for the first time. The blueprint shows some significant changes compared to the Tiger 1. Firstly, and most obviously, is the absence of the almost vertical driver's plate from the Tiger 1. In its place is a new two-piece sloping glacis with the lower, smaller part at a steeper angle than the upper part. In this way, the armor covers the transmission at the front before rising to meet the roof line. Moreover, the Tiger 1 structure was put together in a complex way, with the lower half being riveted to the top half of the hull under the sponsons with a reinforced strip, which was then overwelded. This would be changed for the VK4502H, where this laborious process would be replaced with interlocking those pieces together and then welding those interlock lines between the plates. Interlocking the plates also decreased the likelihood of plates splitting apart when hit by enemy fire or a landmine. This, perhaps more than anything else, is the legacy of the VK4502H, as this method of interlocking for the sides was carried over onto what was to become the Tiger II. The overall construction layout for VK4502H would likely have been easier than the Tiger I with regards to the overall fabrication of the hull, although, clearly, refinements could still be made to reduce the number of plates and joints to attach together. Overall, there was no clear substantial production improvement offered by this design over the Tiger 1, but in fairness, that was not the primary goal of the design. Although the Tiger 1 driver's plate was 100mm thick, it was only angled back 10 degrees from the vertical, providing an effective line of sight thickness of just 101mm. The VK4502H, however, with 80mm of armor in this area and angled back, creating an effective thickness of 125mm, provided more protection in effective armor terms plus a better chance of inducing a shell to ricochet. For comparison, the VK4503H Tiger II had 150mm thick glassy at 40 degree, providing about 195mm of effective thickness. This was made to fulfill an order from Hitler from 3rd January 1943 that the new Tiger was to have a 150mm thick glacy and 80mm thick side armor. The nose of the VK4502H was a single piece measuring 100mm thick and angled forward slightly, measuring 25 degrees from the vertical, providing an effective armored thickness of 110mm. Below this nose was another section of armor angling back to the floor plate. This piece was 60mm thick and angled at 63 degrees from the vertical, for an effective thickness of 205 mm. The front, therefore, was very well protected, with the weakest part being the large 100 mm nose plate. Although with the transmission behind this point, the protection for the crew was substantial. The sides had been changed as well. The upper sides of the Tiger 1 were 80 mm thick and vertical, while the sides of this VK4502H, as measured from the blueprint, were approximately 80 mm but angled back slightly at around 9 degrees from the vertical. The lower hull sides appear to have been the same 60 mm thickness from a vertical plate as used on Tiger 1. There is no indication of any skirting which might have been added to improve protection. 
The chosen gun for this new and improved 45 ton tank was the 8.8cm LSMD-1, chosen to be mounted in a Krupp design turret, which was almost identical to what the VK-5002P possessed. As it was, the turret proved problematic to manufacture and a simpler turret, known as a Serian Turm or Sirius turret, was designed and built for the Tiger II. This is commonly and incorrectly referred to as the Henschel turret, even though both turrets were designed and built by Krupp. As the VK4502H had been abandoned by this time in favor for the VK4503H, the Henschel turret could not have been planned for it. The Tiger I had used a complex triple interleaved road wheel system to put the weight of the tank onto the track and onto the ground. Whilst providing excellent suspension for the tank, the system was not without serious problems. The Tiger II was to use a double interleaved road wheel system instead, a system which was on the drawing board at Henschel by mid-October 1942, the same month the VK4502 was being killed off. The question therefore is whether this improved Tiger would have used the same triple interleaf suspension for the new double interleaf type. The Tiger II hull was over a meter longer than the Tiger I hull, and part of this reason was due to this suspension change. Two road wheels press suspension swing arm and torsion bar meant that another wheel station had to be added for the Tiger II with its 14 tons of increased weight. Looking at VK4502H, with a hull length roughly the same as the Tiger I, there would be no more room in which to add additional wheel station. With more armor, the tank would weigh more than the Tiger I. Although no weight for the VK4502 is known, it could be estimated reasonably to lie in the 60 ton range. As such, the only logical conclusion is that the hull would have to be fitted with the old triple interleaved wheel system in order to cope with the additional load. The early production Tiger I was powered by the HL210 TRMP45 21-liter V12 Maybach petrol engine, producing 650 horsepower at 3000 RPM. Due to problems with the reliability of this motor, the maximum performance could not be achieved, restricting mobility for this heavy tank. As a result of the poor performance, from May 1943 onwards, the more powerful and reliable 700 horsepower Maybach HL230 TRMP45 23 liter engine was introduced instead. Even switching to the HL230 P45 had not been simple. The engine still had problems and, as of 19th of August 1942, it was being suggested that the HL230 P30, which was destined for the Panther tank from MAN, should be fitted to the Tiger. Given the dates of the VK4502H, it is hard therefore to envisage the older engine, which was already being looked at for replacement, as being the engine choice. The obvious choice at this time would have been to incorporate this new motor. The VK4502H is certainly an unusual tank in some regards. It was an evolutionary step between Tiger I and Tiger II with strong influences from the Panther. It was a hybrid of sorts with Panther features at the front, Panther automotives combined with Tiger I steering, and means of hull fabrication like those on the Tiger II. With the VK4502P style turret, new glasses, improved armor protection, and the long 8.8cm gun, the VK4502H was certainly an improvement in firepower and protection terms over the Tiger I. However, it shared many of the same flaws, such as the steering system and, even with an improved engine, weighing in the 60-ton region, it would still have been underpowered. Short-lived as the project was, the VK4502H does fill in a significant gap in the knowledge and study of German armor in World War II and provides an insight into how development progressed from one vehicle to another. This concludes our look at the VK4502H blueprint tank. If you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on a single video. If you want to contribute more directly, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. It helps keep the lights on and allows us to improve the quality of our videos. Until next time, keep us in your sights.